Um, another thing that I think can help us talk about language and identity is um, looking at how being bilingual can affect your identity as well. And that was something that I found through my internships. I worked at, um, I did 100 hours of experiential learning work both at the Mirio Lupin Gallery and PS58 in Brooklyn. And um, what was great about both of those places is that they're located in Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn, which is sort of becoming a, um, a community of, of French expatriates in New York City, which was very cool to see. Um, the program at PS58 is a bilingual program where they have children who are native French speakers and children who are trying to learn French. So they're teaching them both French and English at the same time. And I was able to observe how they did that. And it was very interesting to see how the French children and the, uh, or the Francophone children, because they weren't all French actually, but how the Francophone children and the, um, the Anglophone children, how, their, how being either Anglophone or Francophone affected their identity. And um, a lot of times we noticed that there were cliques developing between the children based on the language that they knew. And so it was very important for the teachers to um, mediate that and learn about that. And also at the Muriel Goupin Gallery, I saw how um, the woman who ran the gallery, who was French speaking, uh, was struggling to form an identity that would fit with the American business model, which is um, I thought was very difficult for her because she was a French woman who was trying to run a business in America. But often the um, the culture that she came from, I thought, was making it more difficult for her. So it was interesting to see how she was balancing being in a French community in an English-speaking um, in an English-speaking country. So um, altogether, it was a really wonderful experience, and I think that both the experiential learning and the thesis writing process tied together tied together very nicely, and it was um, both academically and personally uh, rewarding and fulfilling. So. because I didn't want to make you all sit you know, here and... He's often quoted as saying that he wrote to not be understood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm thinking, honestly, I mean, it sounds like you've had a very large project cut out for you, and it's fabulous. Um, but I also know that Sarah was a magnificent conscience of philosophy person and the yeah. talent for philosophy. If you had considered it all putting in a rigor act, who was quite critical of the Lacanian perspective, yeah. and so would be, you know, it would be great to then yeah. critique of Lacan's even understanding of how Jurassic text. It would be. I actually, it was difficult because there were so many other theories that I was sort of skimming the surface of, and it was difficult for me to not follow down the path of, of Derrida or of Arigurai or um, anybody else that, you know, even talking a little bit about Freud, it was difficult to not do that, but I thought because I had such a a big uh, project here just with Lacan. I tried to just stick with him. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that would be very interesting. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I, I remember thinking in grad school because I was using Lacan in my dissertation, but I'm so glad he was dead because he couldn't write anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I quote that just like what my attitude is about before I ask People you. are very <laughs> critical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, I think that's sort of why I kind of felt the need to leave psychology behind because I feel that psychology is something that I do try to, t to trust because it uses the scientific method and it looks at um, confounding variables and things like that. And so I don't really trust Lacan. I just find him interesting. And that's why I, I don't, I'm not trying to find any truth. I'm not trying to say that that this is something that we experience or that this is something that Duras was trying to write. I just thought that it was an interesting correlation. You're a wise man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Last question. 
And there's a lot of thinkers also who will take the opposite view. It's because of language that keeps this tied to our mothers. Because insofar as language is being used to identify objects in the world, values in the world, people in the world, we're all doing that through the eyes of our parents or our mother. So we never escape it. <laughs> <laughs> so that language actually helps us to reconnect with our mother. Or to reconnect <laughs> Stay connected forever. Interesting. <laughs> who are who are these people? <laughs> Thank you.